Y'all already know what it is. Jay Williams, let's live life. And we're back. The things they don't tell you about prison. The things they're not putting in the news. The things you need to know about before you go commit a crime. And get your silly ass locked up. With a bunch of guys that don't care nothing about you. You know I done been through it. You know I done seen it. So let's relive. A lot of guys I know are still locked up. A lot of these guys aren't coming home. A lot of these guys have been home. Been back. Been home. Been back. Been home. And they're back again. Some of these guys came home around the same time I did. I'd actually talk to some of them in the streets here and there. Tried to employ some of them, give them jobs. And they went back to prison. So it's a no-brainer. There are guys that I talk to that are locked up. Some of these guys I've known my entire life. I'm on the phone the other day and I'm chopping it up. One of my homeboys, he doesn't call very often. <laughs> but this was out of the ordinary for him not to call for this long. It had been months since I heard from him. He used to call at least once a month, you know. I check on him. Do I need anything? You know, is there anything I can do for you? Need me to pass any messages? Anything I can do out here in the world to help you while you're in there? He usually declines, but every now and then he'll, you know, if you could throw something on the book, so put some money on the phone, I'd appreciate it. All right, I got you. Well, he calls me and I'm like, damn, homeboy, I ain't talked to you in a minute. He's like, yeah, man, we've been on lock. I said, yeah, well, they shaking down. He was like, nah, man, we done had a couple murders up here over the past few months. Hmm. This I know to be true. I spent a lot of time at the same place he's at. And in my years there, I would hear of men dying. We would go on lockdown. While the state police came in, the investigators came in, and they investigated the death. This might happen on another part of the compound. There were times where it happened right there in front of my face. There are times when I watched people fight for their life and lose. So I'm talking to him, and I'm like, so uh, they back on that bullshit. He's like... Man, it's worse than ever up here, Jay. He's like, you thought it was bad when you was here. He was like, now it's just, it's crazy, man. He said, the drug game is so out of control. There's so much heroin and so many people fighting to sell heroin or get over on the next man that this is leading to nonstop stabbings. He tells me, you know, the building he's housed in. And I'm not going to get into any of these details. Because these are all open investigations. It tells me the building that he's housed in. That an inmate chased another inmate down. And, you know, the one running died. Chases him around and eventually just something like a scary movie keeps, keeps hitting him with the blade till he's gone. He said, so we was on lock for that, man, for a while. He said, you know, you've seen it before. You know how they do. They come in with the crime scene tape. They come in with the outside police, the real police. Not no guard, not no CO, no turnkey. He said, the investigation takes a long time. You know, they come and question every one of us. All the guards on the ship try to find out what happened. He said they, they locked a dude up, but dude's most likely going to be charged because ain't nobody saying nothing on it. So he took this dude's life and he most likely get away with it. He said, so after, you know, weeks and weeks and weeks of being on lock for this one, we come off lock. And the thing with these locks is it can happen on the other side of the compound, a place that you've never been, a place you have no access to. You're talking... This prison is so large, it's like three prisons in one. And there's no way for you to get over to that other side. 
So if something happens over there, they don't just lock that section down. They lock the entire compound down. So he was getting into it over there, man. Dude gets to fight with the gang members. Said he wasn't really sure what happened. And the guy got his thing off. Like he, him and the one dude went head to head. And he just completely smashed dude. Hurt dude real bad. Thought that was the end of it. A couple of days goes by. One thing leads to another. Bunch of inmates run up on this dude on the yard. And just air him out. Hit him up. Leave him full of holes. Dead on the ground. Dead right there on the wreck yard. So as he's telling me, this is my homeboy. He's not no liar. He's never been a liar. He always had an issue with drugs and stuff on the streets. He's in prison behind stealing to feed his, you know, the heroin addiction he had. But he's never been a liar. I've done a lot of time with him. Locked up on several different compounds with him. You know, kicked it with him a little bit here on the streets. And then he ended up going back to prison, as I told you. <laughs> but he told me, he said, yeah. So that was a, another one. So then we just keep talking. And he's, he's telling me about these different things that have happened in the past few years. People dying, people getting hurt real bad. You know, people getting left with colostomy bags or no use of their arm because they got hit in some nerves when they were stabbed or something. Just all these horror stories that you know come with prison. It's a no-brainer. And before anybody has the nerve or audacity to say, well, you signed up for that, or that's what you get, or if you don't want to deal with any of that, don't get locked up. Ask yourself if you would still be saying the same thing if you got a call at 2 o'clock in the morning that one of your children had been murdered by somebody while incarcerated. Ask yourself if you'd be singing the same tune if your brother went out here, got strung out on drugs and got sent to one of these prisons behind a drug addiction and then was killed. Or if your father got in his car one night drinking and driving and hit somebody else and hurt them and got sent off to prison and now was murdered inside of there, would you still be singing that same well, that's what you deserve. You signed up for that. We know what we do before we do it. You know, that's what gives us, you know, the ability to say we have a brain. But when you're caught up in your madness, you don't always realize what you're doing. With things like alcohol and heroin and these, these heavy things that influence people, They'll have you doing things that you'll look back on later in life like, I can't believe I did that, man. It's not even who I am. I'm not even that type of guy. So I go on to start looking at the news and stuff, trying to, you know, do a little more investigating into these homicides, these, these things that are taking place up there. And I realized something real quick. They're not putting this stuff on the news. They're not making videos of this stuff. They're doing everything they can to keep this out of the media's hands. To keep it from ever reaching your ears. Because they want to paint this picture that they've got everything under control. Virginia's for lovers. That's what they say, right? You've ever been to Virginia when you come in? You know, every state's got a motto. You come to Virginia, you see it. Virginia is for lovers. So they want to paint this picture to everybody else that wants to move here, that might buy a house here, that would want to live here one day, that this is like Mayberry, that this is just this great place. And there are some good parts of Virginia, no doubt. There's some good parts of every state. But for the most part, they try to keep what's going on inside these institutions on a hush. They want these guys to get locked up, forgotten about, nobody discusses it no more, what happens in there, stays in there, the end. Well, I'm going to get into a couple stories today for y'all that I know to be true, that I can speak on, 
because they've already been taken care of. They've already been to court. People have been found guilty. They know the truth. They know what happened. So that's what I'm going to speak on today. Now, I got transferred from Greensville Correctional Center in 2012. On a humbug, they snatched me up, just out the blue, uprooted me, and shipped me to a new compound. It's common, it happens. I was towards the end of my bid. It was about eight, eight and a half years into my bid. So they, when you get to that point, I've been staying out of trouble. Plus, I learned how to move. I wasn't an inmate. I was a convict. The difference between an inmate and a convict is an inmate, he's not, it's like the difference between just a guy walking out on the streets and trying to sell drugs for the first time and a guy that's been on those streets selling drugs for 20 years. That's the best way to describe the difference between an inmate and a convict. A convict is somebody who knows the prison, who knows how to move, who knows how to do things to keep himself out of trouble, how to do things and go undetected. He knows the system. An inmate is just somebody that is constantly, everything he does, he gets caught for. He argues with the guards. He, his actions cause trouble for everybody else in the prison. So, at the time that I got shipped, I'd been a convict at this point for many years, man. I was seasoned and doing this a very long time. So, of course, they're like, hey, Williams ain't been in no trouble in a while. Let's get him up off here. Let's ship him somewhere else. And they shipped me. Well, when I was at Greensville, we had a dude with my pod named Rambo. Cool white dude, man. And we called him Rambo because... He looked like Rambo. He looked like Sylvester Stallone with short hair. Had the little curled up lip and all that. So, you know, people called him Rambo. Plus, So he's back in prison. I can't remember if he was doing six years or eight years. I'm going to post a, a clip for y'all to see. But when I left, man, Rambo, for the most part, he never had no problems with nobody. Rambo had a job that a lot of guys that have done a lot of time or have time to do get, and that is the, the pod job. Your job is to make sure the floors are mopped, swept. They bring you floor wax. You wax these floors. You take this buffer, this big heavy-duty floor buffer, and you buff these floors, and these floors would shine like glass. No doubt they were just... It was crazy the level these guys would go to buffing these penitentiary floors. Now, they took a lot of pride in it. On each section of the compound, there are three buildings sitting side by side. Then there's another section of the compound that is separated by a bunch of fences, three buildings. Then another section of the compound that's separated by three buildings, about a bunch of fences, and there's three buildings. But in every one of these buildings, there is four pods. Each one of these pods has a buffer. And a guy that's job is to clean that pod, clean that floor, buff that floor. He'll be out there all night. I told y'all the story of me and Angry Man and him buffing and us getting to fighting and whatnot. Rambo took pride in these floors, man. Like It, it almost became an obsession with him. Rambo was state struck. There's no doubt to, to him being state struck. State struck means you're in prison and you start to feel and believe in your mind that this is your stuff. You buff that floor and if somebody comes behind you and scratches the floor, you feel some type of way like this is like your house. Rambo was super state struck. I, you know, Seen him get into little tits and tats with dudes about the floor. Pick the chair up, man. Don't drag the, the chair on the floor. I just buffed the floors, man. Y'all don't want nothing to look nice. Dudes be like, man, this is a prison, man. We don't give a fuck about this place looking nice, man. You fucked up in the head, man. Fuck these floors, you know what I mean? As they should be. This is a prison. This is not your home. This is not the tile in your mama's kitchen. Nobody didn't just walk down your wall at your house with a Sharpie. You know what I mean? This is a prison. Every pod is supposed to have their own buffer. Every guy's got one. 
They can do their job. It allows them when everybody else is asleep to come out there cell at night. And these guys were buffed from lockdown at, you know, 11 o'clock or so until breakfast time. They might be out there until 630 in the morning all night long, stripping old off off the old wax with floor stripper, applying new coats of wax, fans blowing, mopping, buffing all night long. I talked to Rambo a whole bunch of times. You know, me and Rambo, we were cool. He wasn't my homeboy, but he was somebody I communicated with, somebody I talked to. So I get shipped, as I told y'all, and I get to this new compound. I've been in this new compound now. I don't know, maybe six months, maybe eight months, somewhere around there. Two dudes I know that I was at the last compound would show up to where I'm at. And we get into bullshitting and talking, and uh, I'm asking, you know, did such and such make parole? Hey, is such and such today? Did he go home? Did this person make warden? Who's the unit manager? Like, which officer became unit manager of the building? I'm just asking questions, you know, to check in on what's going on there, because I still got people there. I was just shooting the bullshit, and they go on to tell me that Rambo was killed. I said, Rambo, whoa, 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 back up. What do you mean Rambo was killed? Like, yeah, man, we went on lock for a little bit. Rambo got murdered. I said, Rambo got murdered. How the hell? Why Rambo get murdered? And I had seen stabbings related to what I'm about to tell you before, about this um, in the past. Rambo was killed over the floor buffer. There was another guy that lived in a pod next door and their buffer had broke down and when I worked maintenance there they would send the buffers over to us we put new brushes in them you know we work on the motors cord might short out but until that got fixed you didn't have a buffer not to mention we had washers and dryers to work on TVs and then all these different things that would break down in the prison cell doors lights electrical outlets, all these things go bad just like in your house and we'd have to go do that so the buffer could sit there sometimes for two, three weeks before we finally got enough time to fix it. Well, this guy in the pod next to the pod I used to live in because Rambo lived in the same pod as me <coughs> had got fed up with not being able to buff the floors. Comes over there one day and tries to take the buffer that belongs to the pod next door not going over there to ask for it, but went over there and they've got a utility closet up front beside the showers. There's a toilet there. So if you're out in the day room, you can use that toilet. And he goes over there and attempts to take the buffer, tells the guard and the guard lets him through both gates. He's trying to pull the buffer out. Rambo comes up and grabs the buffer from him. Now they're in this tussling match over this floor buffer. Rambo tells him, nah, 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 you can't take this. This is mine. This dude's state struck, like I told you. The other dude is state struck. I, I ain't buffed the floors in, in two, three weeks. I need the buffer. Give me the buffer. He said, well, go get one from another pod. I got to use this tonight. You know what I mean? I, I got to work tonight. I need this buffer. They go back and forth about it. Back and forth about it. Dude, Rambo's not letting go of the buffer. The old head dude, ain't, he ain't letting go of the buffer. And the dude that Rambo is arguing with is a lifer. This dude's never going home. Rambo's, like I said, I think got eight years. Rambo don't let go of the buffer. He don't let go of the buffer. They get, you know, to the point where they're just arguing. And Rambo reaches over top of the buffer and just punches dude in his face. Boom! Back up. I'm done talking. I told you, carry your ass. Now you done made me punch you in your face. Dude. Takes it on the chin. Okay. Okay, you got it. You got it. Goes out the door. The guard lets him back through. She didn't see any of this. He goes on back to his side. Rambo goes back to what he's doing. Pushes the buffer back in the closet. Goes back to his business, right? A short time later, everybody goes to chow. Everybody's coming back from chow. And this dude, instead of going back into his pods, the guy that Rambo punched, Instead of going back into his pod when he comes back from chow, he slides over to Rambo's pod. Rambo's already come back from chow and is in his cell. 
just come from eating, probably in there taking his blue shirt off. That's what I would usually do is go back and take the blue shirt off because you got to wear these blue shirts anytime you leave the building so you can be identified. And dude goes in the cell and just chops Rambo down. Goes in there with a big ass knife and just proceeds to murder and Rambo right in the middle of the cell. Rambo's cellmate comes back. There's Rambo dead in the cell. Let's the guards know they hit the code. People had seen what went on. Other people came forward and told. Everybody liked Rambo. He's a cool dude. The other guy, I don't know what his sentence was, what he got sentenced to, but he was found guilty for murdering Rambo over a damn floor buffer. When you're done with this video, you can go Google stabbing at Virginia prison. And the majority of the stabbings that you come up on are going to lead to the death of somebody. There's so many of them that happen day after day after day that never hit the headlines. Very seldom do they just tell you about the stabbing that somebody sustains that leaves them alive. They only speak on what they have to speak about when a camera crew shows up outside. When somebody gets on the phone with their girlfriend or their mom and says, hey, a dude got killed in here today. You need to call the media. And the media shows up. They are never going to reach out to the media and tell them what's going on in there and, you know, voluntarily release this information to the public. Because as I've said, they want you to think that everything is okay. They want you to think that if your loved one gets locked up and sent away, that that release date on the bottom of that paper is when they're going to come home. They don't want you to know or think that at any given moment, this person you love can lose their life. I got to keep this under 30 minutes, so I'm going to jump out. But I empower y'all to think different, man, to do different. If you're inactive, you know, dealing with active addiction, go get some help before you end up like Rambo. Go get some help before you end up being a 19, 20-year-old child, young man, whatever you want to call yourself, that is now surrounded by sharks. They say, I wouldn't wish the penitentiary on my worst enemy. It's not something I stand behind. Because I know 100% there are people in this world that need to be incarcerated and to never come home. I've looked into the face of evil. I've seen the evil that men can do. I've seen what a man with no give a fucks about human life can do when pissed off, having a bad day, or just doesn't like a situation. But to the good people watching, the people that haven't been down that road, stop what you're doing. Because if you were to get locked up and murdered, chances are, only people that are going to find out about it are your family and friends. The world aren't, isn't, isn't going to know. And for the most part, outside of the people that care about you, don't nobody give a shit. I told y'all before, I'm proud of who I am. I'm proud of where I am in life today. I'll never return back to prison. They said never say never. I'll never return back to prison. Because I'm not the person I once was. I use my brain way more than I probably should. And I second guess everything I do. Because never again do I want to be in that position. And I thank God that I made it out. But anyway, these institutions, these jails, these prisons, detention centers, they're all just, what I tell you, crazier worlds inside of this already crazy world that we live in. You know, I know what I'm doing. Just trying to keep y'all entertained. Are you not entertained? 
And as always, this is Jay Williams, Let's Live Life. To all my real ones and awesome real ones watching, because y'all still watching me. And how we do. Salute.